Hi guys, in this video today we are going into Lightroom to edit some real estate photos. I'm going to show you how I blend everything in HDR and we use another program to make life a whole lot easier. And we're going to do that right now. Hi guys, welcome to Chris Lezak Photography where I'm going to try to make you a better real estate portrait and pet photographer. And we are going into Lightroom today. I did a real estate shoot recently um, in Niagara on the Lake and that agent wanted me to do it in HDR. So I'm gonna take a photo here in Lightroom and show you how I process and my, just my workflow, what I do. Um, like I said, we're gonna go into Lightroom and then we're gonna go into another program and you're gonna sh I'm gonna show you exactly how I do my photos. So let's do this, let's go into Lightroom. All right, so we're in Lightroom and here's a photo or three photos of the same room uh, like I said it was bracketed so let's take a look at the photo it looks like uh, you know I exposed for the window so it is underexposed by one shot uh, it's perfectly exposed kind of and overexposed now what we're gonna do here is we are going to highlight all three so let's highlight all three we're gonna right click and we are going to photo merge and there it is HDR so it's going to bring up an HDR preview before it actually merges everything together, uh, just to make sure that we like what we see. Um, and I've got the auto line and the auto tone set up here. Lightroom's pretty smart, so you know it'll be uh, it'll be all right. Uh, there's nothing moving in the background. I'm not worried about anything, you know, flying past the window or anything like that. So my deghosting amount is set to none. And yeah, that's it. So there's the uh, merged photos. Uh, well, what the preview. And if I hit click on merge, it's going to put everything together. Now, this video is not brought to you by Tim Hortons, but I'm drinking a Timmy's coffee anyway while we're doing this. So what it's going to do is it's going to take a file and a photo right here. And it's that's the merged file of all three of these photos together. There's the HDA, HDR file right here. Now, say you unclick something like that. In my workflow, what I do, just just because, you know, I, I like to stay organized, I click on the uh, brightest picture out of the three, go to the last one of the three, I, holding on the shift, highlight them all, and right-click and stack the photos into a group. I do that so that everything, you know, when there's hundreds of photos here, as long as they're stacked, I can see which ones are already done. So I stack them after I merge them. All right, so here's the photo that we are going to be working on. So we'll jump into the develop module here in Lightroom. And it's taking its time. My computer's super slow, apparently. There we go. All right, so now we're in the development module. It looks like when it merged everything together, it took care of all the, the highlights, the shadows, the whites, and the blacks. And it did increase the, ex uh, actually decrease the exposure, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Because for just by looking at this, it looks like a little bit too dark before I go into another program. Now, first things first, lens correction. Always click your lens correction. So I enable profile corrections. What happens is, if you watch the size of this, it's actually going to fix the actual photo. And it did. It brought it back out to... Now that's what it looks like from the naked eye instead of a through a lens. Now you also want to, I also click on remove the chromatic aberrations because all the white area here, the bright stuff coming in from the window, when it hits the dark spots, it may leave a, a purple hue or a blue hue on there. So that's the chromatic aberration and we're going to remove it. Uh, next step is making sure that the photo is straight. So you go into the crop overlay here. And I usually let, and 95% of the time Lightroom is correct when I click on auto angle here. So I'll click on it and it'll automatically look at the photo, analyze it, and make sure it's straight. And actually it did. And it looked like it turned it just about, you know, 0 0.05 here degrees and it's straightened. So we hit done and it looks pretty good. <clears throat> Next. Uh, I just mentioned that it looks a little bit too dark for me before we jump into another program. So I'm going to actually increase and the exposure a few stops. Oh, that's one too many stops. Bring it down right there. All right. Now, 
I use a program which I'm going to be jumping into a, uh, a plug-in program called Perfect Effects 9. Um, Perfect Effects 10 or On One Effects 10 is out already. I purchased that as well. I use 9 on my laptop because it's a little bit more stable and a little bit quicker. So anyway, let's go into that. So right click, edit in. We are going to Perfect Effects 9. On One Effects 10 is there. They are the exact same programs. They look a little bit different, but they do the exact same thing. Um, now, Lightroom is asking me if, if I want to use it with a copy of Lightroom Adjustments, and yes, I do. So it is going to go into Perfect Effects 9. <clears throat> now, while this is going over, um, you know, consider subscribing to my channel because I do, you know, new videos every Thursday, or I try to anyway, and I've been pretty good at it so far. So I'm going to keep it going, keep it on Thursdays, and, uh, you know, like I said, consider subscribing. And letting this go into Perfect Effects now, I'm going to take a sip of my coffee and it should be in there now. And it's coming in. It's coming in the Perfect Effects 9. If I use 10, it just takes about three times as long to come in. <clears throat> so, here is Perfect Effects 9. I'm going to let this finish up here. It's just analyzing, initializing everything, and it's all ready to go. <clears throat> now, because my agent likes HDR, and she likes it over the top HDR, there's a little bit of a filter here in Perfect Effects 9 and 10 called HDR look. So we're going to put HDR on top of HDR. And let me tell you, this has in this has sped up my my workflow exponentially. It is incredible. Um, so what I'm going to do here is before I click on sur surreal, take a look at this photo because in 2 seconds when I click on it, it's going to look a whole lot different. Ready? And 1 2. And boom, it now looks like it belongs in a magazine. I'm just kidding. <clears throat> anyway, so that's what that does. It, it, it HDR is the HDR photo, basically. You can change the layer opacity here on the, with the slider in, in both uh, Perfect Effects 9 and 10. I'm going to leave it at 10. I do another layer as well, which I'm going to bump it, bring in another layer on top, and I sharpen the photo with the sharpening filter, and I'm going to go use the amazing detail finder, and here we go, watch the floor here. Look at that! It just brought it in. Hopefully that, hopefully it captured it well on here. Even the details here on the side, it looks fantastic. So I'm going to hit apply, and that's going to bring me back into Lightroom, where I can then edit it again. But because I'm using these two programs, there's very little editing involved now because this Perfect Effects 9 and 10 are just fantastic programs. So that's saving. It's it's saving its own edit, its own Photoshop, you know, file and or Adobe file. And now we're going in to Lightroom, and it brought it in. And there it is. Looks fantastic, doesn't it? Okay. So because of the original HDR blend in Lightroom, I'm not going to touch the whites and the blacks. However, I am going to bring down my highlights, and I'm going to increase my shadows. And then I am going to bring up the exposure a bit. Watching the histogram, I like to push this over just a little bit to the right. So we're going to increase that and make it pop like that. Now, when I shot this uh, condo in uh, on my camera, I usually set, and not usually, it's always set to neutral colors. It's not set to vivid, it's not even set to standard, set at neutral, so that when I go into programs like this, I can bring up or down the saturation by hand. So, because it's at neutral and I want to make everything pop, I'll bring up the uh, saturation, but I'll probably bring it around 20. Looks pretty good. Um, yeah, this is almost done. Um, just looking at this photo, there's a little bit of a shadow here, only because the light coming into the room is coming in this way and this is all shadowed up here I might I'm gonna bring out a brush and I'm bring about bring out the shadows here as well as on this side of the bed so let's go into the brushes here let's click on shadows bring them all the way up now we are going to you know use a little bit of a just just lightly on this side where the window is not coming in where the lights not coming in and just go around and there we go even if I mess that up a bit, I can go back and take that down like that, and that's it. 
And as well, like I said, we're going to do the side of the bed here. We're going to do just here. Making that pop. Now, in this photo, I, you know what? I might even, you know, because I'm going to bring this over to the agent or send it to her, I'm going to actually make these lights pop a bit. What you do is you, you take a highlight brush and you just stroke down from it. Oh, I just moved it. Let's move that back up there. Yeah. If it looks ridiculous, delete it. Start again. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to increase the brush a bit so that it's a little bit. There we go. And same with the light coming out of here. There we go. See, make it pop onto the wall there. And bring that up a bit as well. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a complete photo, except for one more thing. I do check to see, because I used um, the perfect effects to sharpen it, There may it may have brought in some sharpening noise and or noise as well. So I look for any dark spots. For example, I'll take a look. Uh, this is pretty dark over here, so we'll click on it. Yeah, and as I suspected, it brought in a little bit of noise, which is this grainy stuff here. Now, some of it you can't get rid of, but I'm going to bring it in, and I'm going to bring up the noise reduction here in the detailing tab. And I'm going to bring it up. Probably bring it up to about 25. Which it doesn't look like. Oh, there we go. It just clicked a little bit. And it looked like it smoothed it out a little bit. So, this is real estate photography. This isn't fine art photography. This is, you know, you want to make the room look awesome. No one's going to zoom in at one to one online. I mean, if they, they want to look at details of the photo, what are they looking at? They're looking at the, the place they're buying, or are they looking at the photo? Because I could sell them photos if I want to and make them even better. But this is for real estate. This is fantastic. Agents love this. Well, two agents of mine love these kind of photos. And you know what? It looks good. It looks great. Um, it looks good and great. Yeah, why not? So anyway, that's it. That's done. Now, let's take a look at uh, anything else that we need to do on this. No, oh, that photo is done. This is all ready to go. There's some details inside of everything on this photo and that's it and that ladies and gentlemen is how we edit an HDR photo in Lightroom and for then the way I do it when I'm doing real estate photography so anyway uh, guys if you like the video click like down below and you know what let's start a comment section down below let's talk let's have a discussion let's uh, you know what? I'm gonna ask you a question interact with me when you're taking photos whether it's real estate or if you're taking photos of of people and portraits or even pets how do you guys edit what do you guys use what's your what's your main program that you're using are you using more than one like i am how's your workflow you know what leave a comment down below and uh you know what like i said before don't forget to subscribe and i will see you guys next week all right thanks guys bye